Throughout the course of history, men and women have lived and died. Looking back from this place in time, it is clear that people long ago really did some really dumb things. And in order to understand how they died, we must first understand how they lived. These are the stories of how they died. Ludwig van Beethoven is regarded as one of the greatest musical geniuses of all time. His music has undoubtedly reached us all, somehow or in some way. Beethoven's compositions were considered new and innovative for the time, and he himself was the bridge that connected the classical and romantic periods of music. His music has captivated and electrified audiences for more than two centuries, and it is without a doubt that Beethoven had genius. During his lifetime, Beethoven struggled through an abusive childhood and endured an adult life filled with heartbreak, sickness, and hearing loss. But the music continued to play on in his head. His passion for music would ultimately save his life. Ludwig van Beethoven was born in mid-December 1770 in the sleepy town of Balm, Germany which at the time was a principality of the Holy Roman Empire. Although Beethoven's exact birthday is unknown, official records indicate that he was baptized on December 17, 1770. During his lifetime, Beethoven himself stubbornly insisted that he was born in 1772. But we will get back to that in a moment. Ludwig was one of three sons born to Johann van Beethoven and Maria Magdalena van Beethoven. Ludwig was the eldest, followed by Caspar and Nicholas. His father Johann was a court singer who was known more for drunkenness than his musical ability. It was actually young Ludwig's grandfather and namesake, Keppelmeister Ludwig van Beethoven, who was Bonn's most eminent and prosperous musician. Grandfather Beethoven was a great source of pride for the young Ludwig, so much so that he had a portrait of his grandfather hung on the wall of his bedroom. The young Ludwig was a very shy and intense child and at an early age showed signs of musical talent. His father set out to teach him piano but his lessons were often cruel. If the young Ludwig missed a note or hesitated in the tempo, he would often receive a slap or a shove from his father. At times, he would be locked in the cellar if he did not perform to his father's standards. By the age of five years old, despite the harsh and rough treatment from his father, Ludwig showed a lot of promise. His father even believed that he had a musical prodigy on his hands, just like Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. You see, the Mozarts have presented their young musical prodigy all over Europe a few years earlier, and young Ludwig's father was dreaming of cashing in on the talents of his son. It was true, the young Beethoven was talented, but he was no Mozart, and his father was far too drunk and disorganized to effectively get his son's musical talents noticed. It would seem to most that Johann would rather terrify his son than inspire him. In the hopes that he could make money from his son's talent, Johann presented his son for his first public recital in March of 1778. At this time, the young Beethoven was almost eight years old. However, his father billed his son as a six-year-old musical prodigy. It was this deception by his father that made Ludwig always insist that he was two years younger than he actually was. The young Beethoven played impressively, but the recital received little attention from the press. 
Because of his abusive home life, young Beethoven developed a mistrust of the world and withdrew from his family and friends at school. At the age of 10, Ludwig left primary school in order to study music full-time under the newly appointed court organist Christian Neef. Neef was exceedingly impressed with the young Beethoven and taught him the music of the masters like Johann Sebastian Bach and Joseph Haydn. By the age of 14, Ludwig's father was losing his voice, no doubt as a result of the heavy drinking, and he could no longer support his family as a court singer. So young Beethoven formally requested an appointment as assistant court organist. The request was granted, and he was placed on the court payroll. In 1787, Beethoven had made so much musical progress that he was able to persuade the Archbishop, Maximilian Francis, to send him to Vienna so that he could meet and study under Wolfgang Mozart. According to some traditional accounts, Mozart, upon hearing Beethoven play, was very impressed with Beethoven's ability to improvise music. He had even remarked to friends that this young man will make a great name for himself in the world. However, there is no reliable account of Beethoven's first trip to Vienna. A few weeks after his arrival in Vienna, Beethoven learned of his mother's death and immediately returned home to Bonn. His father was devastated by the loss of his wife and sank deeper into alcoholism. Johann was now constantly getting into drunken brawls down at the pub, and Beethoven would always have to go down and deal with his father's shameful public behavior. The drinking became so bad that Ludwig, now 19, had to take over as head of household. Beethoven was now financially responsible for his father and his two younger brothers. The pressure that Beethoven felt for taking on this responsibility made him bad-tempered and bitter. He would carry these traits with him for the rest of his life. Although the Archbishop no longer showed him special favor, Beethoven was beginning to make valuable acquaintances at the court in Bonn. This brought with it musical pupils and patronage from the aristocracy. In 1792, French revolutionary forces were spreading across the land and into the electorate of Cologne. Beethoven decided to leave his hometown and travel back to Vienna. By this time, Wolfgang Mozart had passed away. This left Joseph Haydn as the greatest composer alive. Beethoven decided to focus his efforts on the aristocracy in Vienna, and Joseph Haydn was his ticket in. A month after his arrival to Vienna, his father passed away in Bonn. Beethoven refused to go back home for the funeral of a man that he absolutely despised. Beethoven studied piano with Haydn and vocal composition with none other than Antonio Salieri, Mozart's professional rival. Beethoven was not yet known as a composer, but he quickly established himself as a virtuoso pianist. Beethoven gained many patrons among the leading citizens of the Viennese aristocracy and was now being paid solely to compose and perform music. By the time he turned 24, he was able to sever his ties with the court in Bonn. Beethoven was now in Vienna to stay. It had been a long time coming when Ludwig van Beethoven made his first public debut in Vienna on March 29, 1795. Over the next three years, he would go on to play concert tours in Berlin and Prague and more. Just prior to the year 1800, Beethoven had begun to experience a constant ringing in his ears. Yet, for a short time, his life continued relatively unchanged. He still played in the houses of the nobility, in rivalry with other pianists, and performed in public. However, 
While Beethoven was composing some of his most memorable works, he was struggling to come to terms with a shocking and terrible fact, one that he tried desperately to conceal. He was going deaf. By 1802, Beethoven could no longer deny that his affliction was getting worse and would most likely be permanent. Upon advice from his doctor, Beethoven moved to the country village of Heliensstadt, where he wrote a letter meant for his two brothers describing the miserable grief and despair that he felt about the loss of his hearing. In the letter, he also admitted to wanting to end his own life, but that he also felt that there was more music that he needed to share with the world. Miraculously, and as if he were racing against a clock, Beethoven continued to compose at a furious pace. Despite his astonishing production of beautiful music, Beethoven was lonely and frequently miserable throughout his life. He was often short-tempered, absent-minded, greedy, and suspicious. Beethoven feuded with his brothers, his publishers, his housekeepers, his pupils, and his patrons. These feuds were often made worse by Beethoven's constant consumption of fortified wine. For many reasons, including his crippling shyness and unfortunate physical appearance, Beethoven never married or had children. He did, however, fall in love with several unavailable upper-class women. In July of 1812, Beethoven wrote a long and beautiful love letter that he never sent. The letter was addressed to only my mortal beloved. This is possibly one of the greatest mysterious love stories of all time. In 1815, the death of Beethoven's brother Caspar ignited one of the greatest tribunals of his life. A terrible legal battle with his sister-in-law Johanna over the custody of his nephew, Carl van Beethoven. The court struggle carried on for several years, during which both sides spewed ugly character defamations at each other. In the end, Beethoven won custody, but the boy ended up hating his uncle. By 1819, Beethoven, now 49 years old, had lost his hearing completely. It was now necessary for him to use conversation books in which friends would write down their questions while he would speak his answers to them. It was also at this time that his playing worsened as he became unable to hear the musical notes. Beethoven was now devoting most of his time to composing in the country. Beethoven's musical ideas came to him while on long country walks and he made notes of these ideas in his sketchbooks. Because of his deafness, he became more of a recluse than ever. His rate of composition also began to decrease. He would often take on the appearance of a drunken vagrant who would wander the streets wearing dirty clothes for weeks. In 1824, Beethoven completed his Ninth Symphony. In spite of his deafness, Beethoven insisted on conducting the symphony himself. When it was over, one of the musicians had to turn Beethoven around so that he could see the roaring applause from the audience. Beethoven's Ninth Symphony remains his most towering achievement. After the summer of 1826, Beethoven contracted pneumonia and became bedridden. His stomach was killing him, his abdomen was swelling with fluid, and his skin was nearly the color of a lemon. Doctors attempted to drain the fluid, but Beethoven would never recover. Ludwig van Beethoven died on March 26, 1827, during a heavy thunderstorm. He was 57 years old. Beethoven had been so horrified by his illness and wanted to ensure that no one suffered in the way that he did. He actually requested that the doctors perform an autopsy so that they could figure out what happened. The official cause of death was determined to be liver failure, possibly caused by alcoholism or lead poisoning. 
The funeral was held three days later at the parish church of Alzagrund and was attended by 20,000 people. In the days following the funeral, one of the grave diggers was reportedly offered money to remove Beethoven's head from the grave. As a result, Beethoven's friends had a guard placed at his grave site. Have you ever heard of the Curse of the Ninth? There is an interesting superstition in the world of classical music. Rumor has it that anyone who wrote a Ninth Symphony would be cursed to die soon, meaning that the composer will be fated to die while or just after writing it. To those who give credibility to this belief, a composer who produces a Ninth Symphony has reached a significant milestone, and to embark on a Tenth Symphony is to test their fate. Some of the composers who have died after achieving nine symphonies include Ludwig van Beethoven, Franz Schubert, Antonin Dvorak, Anton Bruckner, Gustav Mahler, and several others. So tell me, what do you think happened to Beethoven? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to hear more stories of how they died, please help my channel grow by clicking that subscribe button and share this video with your friends. Be sure to turn on notifications so you never miss a new story, and I will talk to you next time. Bye guys.